and the President's going to be signing some executive orders, delivering some much-needed regulatory relief to lenders and borrowers in the next uh, few minutes. We're finishing up the second week here really strong. Yesterday uh, was another great deal was reached with Lockheed Martin for the purchase of a new lot of F-35s. Uh, through the President's intervention, a total of 90 planes uh, for a, a lot of 90 planes, 55 were purchased for US, U.S. military that added up to a total of $455 million savings for U.S. taxpayers from the previous slot, with an average cost reduction of 7.5 percent, another big win that the President has delivered on for U.S. taxpayers. Speaking of good numbers, let's turn to the jobs report. The economy added more than 227,000 new jobs, significantly more than the 175,000 that had been expected. Today's report reflects the consumer, the consumer confidence that the Trump presidency has inspired. According to a recent Gallup poll, economic confidence is at a new high and ADP showed strong private sector hiring. President Trump campaigned on how to make America work again. Even before the, he took office, the markets knew he would deliver on that promise. The President's already taken significant steps to turn our economy around, and he's looking forward to ensuring that every American who wants a job has the opportunity to find one. While the President's definitely pleased that the job growth has far surpassed expectations and that the labor force participation is rising, he also recognizes that there's a lot more work to be done. The President has a big and bold agenda to grow the U.S. economy and to create jobs. In just his first two weeks in office, he's met with f more than 50 business leaders across a vast range of industries. This morning, the President participated in a strategic and policy forum with business leaders from some of our co country's most successful companies. The President understands the importance of an open dialogue with fellow business leaders on how to make the economy, econ the nation's economy stronger. His firsthand experience as a successful businessman helps to guide his decisions as President, and he will continue to seek opinions of other job creators while crafting an economic agenda. All of these meetings are focused on one primary goal, providing new and improved employment opportunities for all Americans. We're looking at a full range of policy measures to achieve that goal, regulatory relief, tax and trade reform, empowering women in the workplace, rebuilding America's crumbling infrastructure, and improving our education system. Also today, in pursuit of that goal, the President will be signing two executive actions as part of his plan to overhaul our financial and regulatory system. I expect that to happen closer to the 1 o'clock hour. The first is an executive order proposing guideline principles that sets the table for a regulatory system that mitigates risk, encourages growth, and more importantly, protects consumers. The Dodd-Frank Act is a disastrous policy that's hindering our markets, reducing the availability of credit, and crippling our economy's ability to grow and create jobs. It imposed hundreds of new regulations in financial on financial institutions while establishing unaccountable and unconstitutional in a new agency that does not adequately protect consumers. Perhaps worst of all, despite all of its overreaching, Dodd-Frank did not address the causes of the financial crisis, something we all know must be done. It did not solve the too big to fail, and we must determine conclusively that the failure of a large bank will never again leave taxpayers on the hook. The Presidential Memorandum addresses the burdensome government regulations in the Department of Labor's fiduciary rule. The rule is a solution in search of a problem. There are better ways to protect investors, and the Trump administration is taking action to do so. We're directing the Department of Labor to review this rule. The rule's intent may be a, to have provided retirees and others with better financial advice, but in reality, its effect has been able to, it has to limit the financial services that are available to them. President Trump does not intend to put unnecessary limits on economic opportunity. The Department of Labor exceeded its authority with this rule, and this is exactly the kind of government regulatory overreach the President was put in office to stop.